that he will touch. Amen. Well, I want to welcome everyone to uh, Sunday morning service here at Timberlake Baptist Church. Whether you are here in the building or you're in radio or internet land, welcome. Uh, for those of you who are visitors here, you are honored guests today. And I hope and pray that the Lord will come and touch you the way I know he will. I just want to go on pray real quick for our services before we turn it over to my man Bill before he enlightens us on whose birthday it is this week. But we're going to go ahead and pray. And uh, i got a prayer list, and I want you to uh, pray with me. And uh, let's go ahead and welcome God here in our service. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we just want to thank you, Lord, for the privilege and honor it is to be here in your house once again. We're so thankful, Lord, for the freedom that we do have in this country to be able to come and speak to you and to pray to you and to assemble together in such an easy manner that we do. But, dear God, I ask that you would just bless our services today, bless our pastor, bless our choir, bless everyone who's uh, doing specials, everyone involved in uh, the service today. I pray, God, that you would just reach out and touch them. I do ask, Lord, you be with Beverly Keene, as well as Judy Snow and Mike Tickle with their prayer needs. I lift up to you Cindy Rutherford, Jamie Cole, and Jack Dale. I ask God that you be with the prayer needs of Gail Jones and Maureen Johnson, as well as Alan Cheryl Podobinski. We lift up to you today Nancy Newton, as well as Danny Warwick and Evelyn Watlington. Father, we also ask you to be today with Angie Oaks, Linda Durham, and Audrey Hoskins, and Gary Kilby. We lift up to you the prayer needs of Robert and Vicki Reed, as well as Liz Thompson, Betty Mitchell, and uh, Betty Shields. We have our best shields. We ask you, God, to be with the family of uh, Donald Duncan, as well as uh, Kayla Cheney, Earl and Barbara Clarkson, Lord. Just pray them, uh, reach down and touch them. Uh, also, Lord, please be with Carlton Duck and his uh, health needs, as well as Scott Dean and Polly Fry. Lord, we also ask you to be today with uh, John and Linda Mitchell, as well as Irene Bell and the Larson family. We lift up to you the Reigns family, Lord, in their time of loss, and pray, God, that you be with them, as well as the Wilson family and Vicki Schelling and the Vickers family. Lord, we also ask you to be with uh, Cal uh, Kathy Allen, Polly Bobcock, and the war in Ukraine, God. We pray that you would just make peace. We also ask, Lord, that you be with the family of James Holt and the family of Jack Zach Porter. We lift up to you um, Gary Salmon's mom's upcoming uh, procedure coming up very soon. Pray that your hands be up on that. We lift up to you Toby Moore as well as Larry Foster and the special unspoken from Mike Tickle. Lord, we ask you to be with Angie Moore as well as Caleb and um, the men that are traveling today, going back to JMU, Lord, give them safe travels uh, to and from. We lift up to you uh, the prayer needs of Landel and Kim, uh, Kendall Walker, as well as Scott Eames, who's facing heart surgery. Lord, we do consider it an honor and privilege to call these requests out to you, Lord, because we know full good and well you're going to answer them according to your precious and holy will, and we ask that your will be done. We also ask, Lord, you be with bless the remainder of our service, bless the word that's going to be brought out, but most importantly, Lord, if someone here has never been touched by you and does not know Christ as their Savior, we ask that today be the day of their salvation. We're so thankful for this opportunity. These things we ask in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Now I'll go ahead and turn it over to Wild Man Bill. Come on up, buddy. <laughs> he knows me, don't he? Good morning. Man, this is like a good group. It's getting bigger every year, every week. Uh -huh, praise the Lord. The Lord will be in this too. We want them more gathered. He'll be in there. So let me, while I'm thinking of, excuse me. So have you heard something about Dr. Arthur having surgery? Okay, okay. Y'all pray for Dr. Arthur. He's going to have surgery. Uh, now we're going to get to birthdays. Of course, you know, as long as we've been here, we always got to have a tickle. <laughs> so Michael Tickle is Friday, March the 25th. Oh, 50. 50 years old. <laughs> Stand up. Where you at, Mike? Oh, that's right. He's back. That's all right. That's all right. Aaron, that's all right. <laughs> We'll get him later. Just make Aaron stand up for him. Yeah, Aaron, you stand up for him. <laughs> <laughs> you better looking than he is, but that's all right. <laughs> Do you realize I've been long, married longer than Mike Tickle has lived? <laughs> that's scary. Ask Judy. See where she's at. 
that, don't you? <laughs> Walking behind the walker, you see where I'm at? Okay. You don't have to tell me twice. Don't forget your, wait a minute. Did I miss anybody? See, the preacher jumped up and I forget. Did I miss anybody's birthday? I'm doing good. Anybody got an anniversary? Stand up. Yes. That's Cody's mom and dad. Hey. I like her. She's got she got the red that matches my eyes, right? How long have you been with that? 44, 44 years. 44. I'm sorry. How long have y'all been married? 17. My guess. Look over here. That's the result. Aren't they pretty? Man, I want one of them. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Somebody wasn't going to tell me. Oh, I'm not going to ask you your age. How old are you? <laughs> 43. That's when I was born. 19. 1943. I was older than that. I mean, that's all right. <laughs> Happy anniversary to both of you. And to y'all. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Slip over so people can see what you look like. And Mike? Slip over a little bit. We're going to sing happy birthday to you. Okay, hit it. <laughs>
way. Stand, take your hymn books, turn to page number 63, and let's sing. It's only two verses, so you got to sing both of them. So amen. What a day that will be. Page number 63. What a day, glorious day that will be.
Bibles and turn to Job chapter 33 and verse number 25. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. Brother Bill Snow's life verse. One day he's going to be like a little kid again. We're going to get to heaven. He's going to be rejuvenated from top to bottom. Say amen, Brother Bill. Amen. You're not going to know which one's Patrick and which one's Bill. <laughs> Patrick didn't want to hear that. <laughs> when you repent of your sin, though we look forward to going to heaven, we look forward to seeing our mansion and walking the streets of gold and meeting Jesus. We look forward to that. Dottie Rambo wrote that song 55 years ago. She's in heaven today enjoying those wonderful things. But you don't have to wait till you get to heaven to enjoy a new life. You can enjoy a new life now and later. I got candy on my mind. Now and later. <laughs> some of y'all got that. Some of y'all get that during lunch. But when you repent of your sins by turning to Christ and accepting his gospel and choosing him as your personal Lord and Savior, something glorious happens. You are spiritually born again. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Aren't you glad you're saved this morning? If you're not saved this morning, you can be before you leave this building. You can leave different than you came. You can leave with a pep in your step, amen, and a song in your heart. John chapter 3, verse 7 says, Marvel not, that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Now, old Nicodemus, he must have been a southerner. It was hard to get anything through his head. He was hard to understand being born again. He thought you had to be born all over again, Jesus says, no. Not physically, but spiritually, you've got to be born again. One day, you'll physically be born again if one day you've been spiritually reborn. And when a man or woman hears the message of the gospel from the scriptures, from the word of God, about God's grace and the ransom we talked about last Sunday morning from sin, if that person believes it from the heart, enough to call out for a rescue of their soul, to Jesus Christ, to save him. He becomes miraculously, by the power of God, born again. I'll never forget when I was a kid, there was a man in our town named John Smith. Really, he was. John Smith, that was his name. And old John Smith, he worked down, at, I believe, at the foundry, making those pipes. Probably some of those pipes in your house today that he made down on the foundry in the, in the James River. And he'd go home every night, and before he'd get home, he'd drink a fifth of liquor. And then he'd go home, he'd open another one and sip on it all night long. His wife had been got tired of it. She was in the back bedroom packing her bags to leave her husband. And the doorbell rang. And you know who was a little white-haired preacher named Earl Clarkson? And old Earl come in, sit down, and start talking to John Smith. And he started reading the scriptures to John Smith. And John Smith saw had tears running down his face. In just a few minutes, old John Smith made a call for rescue. And he ran back in that bedroom while she's still packing her clothes. And he grabbed Phyllis by the hand and said, come here, i got to tell you something. And I, somebody's got to tell you something. He got her in the living room, and that little old white-haired preacher done the same thing to her. He done to uh, John. And he told her about the gospel. And right there, John Phyllis Smith got gloriously saved. John Smith never drank another drop of liquor the rest of his life because he was changed from the inside Say amen. amen. Hey, she didn't. She unpacked her bags, and she's been with him ever since. They've been married almost 60 years. Say amen. amen. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must. It's not an option. Ye must be born again. Made new by, look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. 
being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed, the word of God, which liveth and abideth, what? Forever. You know why I love studying this whole book? I'm going to live forever. It's going to live forever. And we're going to have a good time together forever. Because God doesn't lie. God tells the truth. Say amen. amen. You can't believe nothing you hear on the radio, nothing you see on the internet, amen. nothing you hear from your next door neighbor. You can't believe nothing today. But you can believe the word of God. Because it's true. It's factual. It's compassionate. Oh, listen to me. When a man by faith believes in Jesus Christ, God rolls back the clock and makes all things new between God and man. I'll tell you one thing. I was seven years old when I got saved, but I knew I was a wicked sinner. Don't you say amen right there. And I got saved at seven years old, and I knew all my sins, all the bad things I'd done were gone. I had a new reason to live. I was seven years old. I knew I had a new reason to live, to live for God. A new creature's sins are forgiven. His past is erased. His relationship with God is restored forever. He's sealed unto the day of redemption. No, you're not perfect. There's nobody perfect in this room. Even after you're saved, you're not perfect. Thank God for 1 John 1, 9. We confess our sins. He's faithful and just. Forgive us our sins and do what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Marvel not, you must be born again. Made new by Christ, but after that, there's ministry now. You don't just sit there and soak and sour until Jesus comes. Oh, no. It's time to get up and do something for God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God. See, everybody stops at verse 17. Verse 18 says something powerful. All things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. Once you get wonderfully, gloriously, marvelously born again, now it's time to go out and lead other people to Jesus. That's our job. Soul winning. Reaching people with the gospel. Telling the same, same story until we get to glory. Say amen. And hopefully, if we tell it from, then, from about now to then, hopefully, We'll take somebody with us. Say amen. Oh, that's the joy of the ministry of reconciliation, of sharing the gospel. He's given us a new beginning and a promising future by the residence of the Holy Ghost in our hearts. And you know what the question to you this morning is? Are you saved? And if you are, are you serving? If you're not saved, you ought to get saved. Say amen, Christians. And if you're not serving, you ought to get serving. Because time is running out of the hourglass. The regeneration of the spiritual. Number seven, confession of a helpless state. That word confess means admit or state that one has committed a crime or is at fault in some way. Romans 10, 9 says that if we confess with our what? Mouth, our mouth. The Lord Jesus Confess that he's the Savior. Admit that he is the one who died for you and paid your sin debt and you need him. And shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. That's what the choir sing about today. Thou shalt be what? Saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You cannot be saved until you admit you're a sinner. That's a fact. Because once you see you're a sinner, you'll know you need to be rescued. I'm glad Jesus rescued me. Rescue the perish and care for the dying, snatch them and pity from sin in the grave, weep o'er the old one, reach to the fallen. Oh, Jesus, he's wanting to save the lost. Amen? Amen? First John 1 8, if we say that we have no sin, we have deceived ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just realizing you've, you've sinned and confession you've sinned is enough for Jesus to forgive you. You can't beat that with a stick. He didn't say you got to run 10 laps. He didn't say you had to give him a million dollars. 
He didn't say you had to hold your breath and count to 5,000. He said simply believe in the gospel. Believe that he's the Savior. Ask him to save you. You see, there's a petition. Job 33, 26 says this, and he shall pray unto God. Let me tell you something. If you're going to pray to anybody to get saved, it's going to be God. It's not going to be Muhammad. It's not going to be Buddha. You know, some people said I look like Buddha. <laughs> Shame on you for saying such a thing. Every time I'd go into Chinese restaurant, it was up here on Piney Forest Road. Larry Ticker would say, there's the preacher. Buddha sitting there. There's the preacher. <laughs> terrible. Terrible. Listen to me. Buddha can't save you. But Jesus can. Say amen. amen. The Bible is very clear. The very moment this man's eyes, that lost sinner's eyes were open, and his heart is touched, he, and, uh, he can at that very moment Call on the Lord to save him. It's no grace period, no waiting period. You can get saved instantly. You tell me, preacher, I can get saved today. That's exactly what I'm telling you. You can leave here, come here an old sinner, and leave here a sinner saved by grace. Say amen. It can happen instantly. Isaiah 64, 25. 65, 24. Let's get it right. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, <laughs> I will hear. What a promise. While you're just calling on God, he, he hears you before you even speak the words. He reaches out to you while you're praying and saves you and regenerates you. He wants, and you know what that verse is saying? He wants to save you more than you want to be saved. That's what that verse is saying. Thank God for that. There's no other religion that offers that availability of salvation. The Bible offers man salvation at the moment of his dying breath if the message is available and they are willing to listen. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that glorious? At the moment, that instant, you can be saved. Did you know no other religion offers that? No other religion offers instantaneous salvation. You've got to do something else. You got to be baptized. You got to join the church. You got to say so many of this, that, and the other. You got to be sprinkled by this preacher, dunked by that one. No other. No, and ours is not a religion. Ours is a relationship. That's why it works. Say so, amen. Instantaneously, being born again provides miraculous, instantaneous <clears throat> transformation from light to darkness, from hell to eternal hope. From condemnation to salvation. From loneliness to the sealing of the Holy Spirit who will never leave you nor forsake you. What a promise. What a gift salvation is. People are so lonely in this world today. And you'd think with all the means of communication, nobody would be lonely. But you know people are so lonely today. Why? Because that's what the devil wants. He wants you to feel lonely and feel sorry for yourself and fall into a misery of depression and sin. But if you've got the Holy Spirit of God, listen, you can live gloriously in a bad world. Amen? Amen. You can live gloriously in a bad world. All you've got to do is make that petition. Then the compassion in verse 26b. And he will be favorable unto him, and he will see his face with joy. Let's compare Putin to God. I pick God. What man in modern years, other than an insane idiot, kills innocent people? I don't care what politicians say. I don't care what countries say. Let's just be honest. I don't give a flip what China says. I don't give a flip what the people in Iran say. He's a madman. He's a murderous monster. And he can be a part of the Orthodox Church of Russia if he wants to, but I'll tell you one thing. He's so far almost to hell, one bomb would take care of him. He's horrible. But do you realize your God's the opposite of that? Say amen. He's full of compassion. He'll look, all you got to do is say you're sorry, and he'll look favorable to you. I've met some people and said sorry to him, and they still hated me. That's the truth. But he'll look favorable to you. 
You can wake up one morning scared to face the world with no hope that anything is going to work out in your life. No gumption to lift your head off the pillow and go on with your day. But if you'll meet Jesus and accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, your whole world will turn upside down and turn around. Say amen. And you'll still be in the same world. But the difference is God will be with you, smiling on you. And that's what we got to have to have a good life. Is God with us and smiling on us? Because he's a God of compassion. You'll accept him today. That night, with Jesus in your heart, when you go to bed, you lay down to sleep knowing that your soul's with Jesus. I remember my grandma putting all of us in the bed one night. Me and my two uncles and putting us in the bed in the upstairs. That was before they had heat. All you had was a fireplace downstairs. I'm that old. There's bats flying in the ceiling, scare us to death. <clears throat> We'd be scared of them old bats flying up. And you say, where were you at, Transylvania? No, sir, I was in Dry Falk, Virginia. And then bats is flying all around up in the ceiling, scared us to death. And my grandma said, y'all pray now. We'd have to repeat after her. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Here's the part scared me to death. If I should die before I wake, them vampires was up there in the ceiling, say amen. <laughs> if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. I got one better than that. I don't even have to ask him but one time. Say amen. And he'll keep my soul. He'll take care of me because he loves me. You may not love me, but he loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Thank God for the promise of God. Amen? Oh, his compassion, his love. You can start the day with turmoil and end the day in perfect peace. Only Christ can do that. With a call of prayer, you can be rescued and saved forever by his blood. Psalm 78, 37. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of what? That's a hundred dollar word for love. When's the last time you told your sweetheart, I compassion you? Now, you can use that $900 word. You can say, I love you. Say it. Huh? I love you. Being full of love and compassion. Forgave their what? Iniquity. And destroyed them not. I'm glad I'm not going to hell. You can tell me to go to hell every day, and I ain't going. You said it and mean it, but I ain't going. Because Jesus loves me. It don't matter if you love me. Jesus loves me. He's full of compassion. But not only does he love me, he justified me. Just as if I never sinned. Some of y'all got a list at your house. I done heard about it. I hear people talk about it on the phone quite often. They got a book, The 999 Sins of Pastor Yancey, Volume 1. <laughs> and then when y'all get the next 199, or 999, you'll start Volume 2. Because you ain't going to let me forget nothing I do wrong. And Elizabeth, I ain't going to forget nothing you do wrong either. <laughs> Since she thought she was being bad, I got, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got her back, say so amen. I got trifocals, honey. I can see all the way back there. <laughs> My glasses will be gone. She'll be done stolen for the next service. Amen. 
I won't even be able to read my notes. Some people don't never forget nothing you do wrong. But Jesus done forgot everything I did wrong yesterday. Everything I'm going to do wrong today, which might be a bowl of spaghetti sometime. <laughs> and everything that I forgot, everything I've done tomorrow, I'm justified. Not because of me, because that's how powerful his blood is. Now, being justified don't give you the right to go out and sin. Did you hear that, Elizabeth? Being justified don't give you the right to go out and sin. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, God forbid that you do that. You've been saved not to live in sin, but you've been saved and given liberty to what? Serve. See, preacher, where'd you get that? I had to give it to my son on the telephone last night for a class he's got at Liberty. <laughs> they ain't gonna like me at Liberty after this. But that's all right. You don't have liberty to sin. Oh, they're teaching them in Liberty now that, oh, it's all right to have a little social drink. Well, Jason's gonna tell him it ain't. <laughs> Because the Bible says it ain't. Say amen. Oh, man. We don't have liberty to sin a little bit and enjoy ourselves. No, sir. We've been freed from sin. We've been justified in the eyes of God so we can get out here and do something for God before this life is over. And let me tell you something. You're, you may be young, but you're going to be the old fast. Ask anybody in here with wrinkles or bald headed, they'll tell you it didn't happen slow. It happened overnight. It, it happened overnight. Old age just grabbed a hold of you and, and jerked you in a knot. And, and you're five one day and you're 95 the next day and the undertaker's standing at your door just waiting. Somebody said life was like toilet paper. <laughs> the closer you get to the end, the faster it rolls. <laughs> Now, is that not the truth? <laughs> the closer you get to the end of life, let me tell you something. It was just Valentine's Day yesterday, and the Easter Bunny was here yesterday. The Easter Bunny was here yesterday. How do you know? Because she snuck up behind me and scared me. And then I got home. This is the truth. I've got no reason to lie. If you don't believe me, come to my house, I'll show you. One of my preacher friends sent me a text. I wish I had my phone. I'd read it to you. Got a deep theological question for you, preacher Nancy. I thought, praise God, he thinks I'm smart. <laughs> Woo! I'm on, this guy's older than me. I'm going to give him a theological dissertation. I'm going to show him what I know. Explain to me how a rabbit can lay eggs. <laughs> and how they get hung in a tree. Please explain. Then he had that little dot, 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 dot. Saw your picture on Facebook <laughs> with the Easter Bunny. I'm going to fricassee me an Easter Bunny. <laughs> now if I do that, then kids will fricassee me and say Amen. The Easter Bunny done promised 4,000 eggs in 30 days, and he better come through, or these kids are going to have a rebellion. <laughs> Listen to me. People don't forget nothing. They don't forgive nothing. But don't worry about that. God does. God does. Jesus will give that man what he can never get on his own, the righteousness of God. He wipes away our past and gives us a future. That man can be justified in God's sight through the blood of Jesus Christ of the cross of Calvary. Job asked an important question in Job 25, 4. How then can a man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Well, Paul answers that question in Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be our propitiation. He calmed God down for us. God was mad, but now God's not mad anymore. Through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God 
to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in who? All you got to do is believe in Jesus. God didn't ask too much of us. He just asked us to give us, give him our heart, soul, and life with contrition. Last verse, Job 33, 27. He looked upon men, and if any say, I have sinned, and perverted that which was right, and it profiteth me not. You don't get just get saved because you don't want to go to hell. Do you understand that? That won't save you. Nobody wants to go to hell has got a right mind. But you don't go to hell just, or go to heaven and get saved just because you don't want to go to hell. You've got to realize there's something wrong between you and God. You've got to realize there's a sin bed between you and God that keeps you from going to heaven. And something has to take care of that sin debt. Well, what's going to get you to the point where you care about that? When you realize you're lost because of that sin. And you realize that which you have enjoyed in this life is going to destroy you in the end of your life unless Jesus Christ removes it. And you've got to be so convicted of sin that it breaks your heart that you hurt God. That's, my friend, when you'll truly get saved. Say amen. Contrition. Oh, listen. I love the phrase, if any, whosoever will may come. Joel chapter 2, verse 32 says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's in the Old Testament. Then in the New Testament, Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know what that tells us? You got saved the same way in the Old Testament as you did in the New Testament. By believing on Jesus Christ. One set was looking forward, the other set's looking back, but they're all looking at the same thing. Say amen. Anyone can be saved no matter how dirty and cluttered their life has become with sin and the filth of this old world. This is why we as the church must take the grace commission literally and preach the gospel everywhere to everyone. All are able to be saved. Good works will not save them. They cannot save themselves. But Jesus can and will fix life's problem of sin if we'll just allow him to do it by believing in his powerful, soul-saving, life-changing gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. Let me say this to the Christian. When you sin, if you don't get convicted, you're in bad trouble. If you're close to God, every time you sin, you want to make it right. If I used to make Ruby mad, I'd say I saw her fast because I think she'd quit cooking for me. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you hug up to sin and you walk away from God, he can't help you. You're on it on your own. You're lonely. I don't want to ever be lonely without Christ. Say amen. But you've got to realize sin is what comes between you and God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but look, the Lord delivereth him <laughs> out of them all. I got a lot of problems. Don't you say amen right there? Because you do too. I ain't got all day to tell you, but you do. You know don't look so innocent at me. You know you got problems. But I'm here to tell you he's the problem solver. And he solved it before you were ever born. Before you ever thought of. Say amen. One last verse. This is a tickle verse. Romans 51, 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. I'll never forget when I was a teenager, about 11 or 12 years old, I just got out of children's church, and the children's church preacher, he said, Walter, you want to stay in children's church? I said, well, why? He said, well, we want to make you a leader. Work with us. I said, sure. We'd love to. So they gave me a bunch of responsibilities doing children's church, and one of them was, during the invitation to children's church, if one of those children went to the altar, I'd go pray for them. So if any of them went to the altar, I'd go ask them if they need to be saved or if they need to be prayed for. And 
I'll never forget this one little girl. She'd gone to the altar in children's church. And when I got to her, tears had just wet her whole face. I said, what's wrong? She says, I, I've been wrong and I'm scared God won't forgive me. I said, well, they taught me, you don't ask what they've done. You don't do that. They said, just explain to them that God will forgive any sin. First John 1 9. And I said, First John 1 9 tells us it doesn't make any difference what you do. If you're sorry, you've done it. And you don't go back and do it again. God will erase it off your slate. And her eyes got so big. She says, Really? Really? God will forgive you from anything? I said, Yes, He will. Just pray. Just ask God to forgive you. And that little girl, she said, Jesus, I'm sorry. I took those cookies Mama told me I couldn't have. <laughs> Would you, Lord, please forgive? Tears just flowing down her face over a cookie. <laughs> but I got to pray. Because <laughs> I'd stole some cookies too, Mama told me I could have. <laughs> So me and that little bird girl both got right with God right down the altar. <laughs> but if a little girl can get that broken hearted over a cookie, what do we need to come shed tears for on this altar this morning? Heads are bad, eyes are closed. This morning, maybe you're one of those who are here that'll say, Pastor, I gotta be honest. I don't know if I die right now and go to heaven. But preacher, I realize I'm a sinner. I realize there's no hope for me other than Christ. And I desire to be saved. I want to be saved. We've read all the scripture to you this morning. All I've got to do is call. People are praying right now as you sit there for you to be saved. Settle it once and for all. If you have doubts, just settle it. Get it done today. Just get what Dutch, get it done so you can go forward for Jesus. Preach, I need to be saved. Pray this prayer silently while I pray it out loud. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sin. I believe Jesus died to pay a sin debt I owe. I believe he was buried to give me forgiveness that I so desperately need. And I believe he rose again to give me eternal life, which is what I want. Dear Jesus, please save me right now. I accept you as my Lord and Savior and what you did for me as payment for my sin. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Now, Lord, help me serve you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name. With every head bowed, every eye closed, absolutely nobody looking around. If you pray that prayer, I'll not come to you. I'll not embarrass you. I'll not call you by name. But I'd like to pray for you today. I'd like to pray for you as you start your new life in Christ and give you an opportunity for 60 seconds after you get saved to give God the glory so the devil won't get victory over you. And is there one that said, Preacher, I prayed that prayer and I meant it. Pray for me as you I start my new life with Jesus. Slip your hand up so I can pray for you. But I don't see you wave at me. Preacher, I prayed that prayer. I accepted Christ. I'm not ashamed of it, and I want to live for him. Anyone that way, just wave at me if I don't see your hand. How many this morning say, Preacher, I've done things a lot worse than stealing a little cookie out of a cookie jar. And I'm heartbroken over it. And I want to make it right. Well, then all you got to do is come to this altar, kneel, sit on the pew, stand, whatever you got to do, and make it right with God. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you've got lost loved ones that need to be saved, you need to come pray they'll get saved this morning. Just leave your seat, come to the altar. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Today's prayers are tomorrow's souls. Come pray for them this morning. 
Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. Stand to your feet. Father, take this invitation. God, speak to every heart that needs help today. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, somehow, some way, Lord, that you will be able to work in their hearts to help them be soul winners, to help them confess their sins and forsake it, or whatever their need is this hour. God, take this invitation. Work miracles, I pray in Jesus' name. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Many are already coming. Why don't you come? Let's do business with God this morning. Come on.
to give myself a heart attack then, apparently. <laughs> Brother Steve, you dismiss us in prayer. Hope to see you all back tonight. Heavens, Father, we just thank you.